Hello, this is Mark J. Horn, and I've finally gotten a capacitance and inductance meter. So, this is the LC100A model. Um, so, I'm going to be doing kind of a review of this um, this inductance meter. So, so yeah. Um, so, I ordered this on eBay from China. Um, it was $25, I think. Um, so, and this is the LC100 through A model, um, and it's really good. Um, it's basically bare bones. It doesn't have any case or anything like that. It comes with um, what you see here and a, US, a mini USB um, plug um, or cable, and it works great. So I would rate it a 4.9 out of 5 stars, so it's pretty good. Um, but here are some of the other meters that I considered um, when I was buying them. There are a few of these LC100, well, actually LC models that are similar, very similar to this. They basically use the same exact board and everything. Um, but this is the um, one here. It has low and high of both capacitance and inductance. The capacitance goes from 0 0.01 p um, picofarads to 100 um, micro or millifarads, and the Inductance goes from on the low setting um, 0 0.001 micro Henry to 100 Henry's, so that's pretty big range there of both of those. And then it's the on the website it claims that it's plus minus one percent of um, of accuracy. Um, I'm not sure how accurate accurate really is, but um, that's what they claim. And it has four digits of um, actual display. Um, that displays the um, actual digits of um, what it's reading. And it runs off of 5 volts, um, and that's about all it can really run off of. Um, there's a little plug here for 5 volts, or the USB plug for 5 volts. Um, it has to be pretty close to 5 volts, 4.5 to 5.5 volts, or else it's gonna, the screen doesn't work properly or it might give you a false reading. <clears throat> and then there's also a few other LC models. This LC200 through A model is um, a bit more expensive, $37, but it has a case and I'm guessing it also has a regulator because it um, can run off of 9 or 12 volts. And I think it has a 9 volt battery inside too. Um, but it's basically the same exact thing except it's in a box. Um, and then there's the LC100 through S model, and that one just is exactly the same except it doesn't have the high capacitance range. So it can do the low capacitance and the low and the high inductance. So that one's, if you want to just measure inductance, I would go with this one. It's a bit cheaper. Um, and then there's also these, um, these both are $10 ones, um, but they aren't quite as good. Um, they, the accuracy isn't as good, and also the range is pretty bad. This one has 200 PF to um, 20 um, millifarads. That's the range, and it's, yeah, plus minus 2%. And then this one has 1 PF to picofarads to um, 200 microfarads, and it also has inductance, 20... Um, I guess that's uh, millihenries to 20 henries, so that's not a very big range either. And then it has, if you want resistance, that's pretty good resistance range there, but that's pretty average. And then it also has transistor tester. So this one isn't, this one's going to, I don't know, those two aren't as good. I would definitely go with this one, though. It seems to be top of the line for its price. Um, I mean, you can buy other ones that are more professional, but they're going to be like in the range of fifty to a hundred dollars, I would say, um, and I wasn't willing to pay that much. So, twenty-five dollars is pretty cheap. So, and it, ha it was basically free shipping too um, for the U.S. So, as I kind of mentioned before, the only drawbacks for, of this one are that it doesn't have any vo sort of voltage regulator, um, so it has to run off of exactly five volts, and also the alligator clip is a little bit um, the coating is just kind of rotten and it's just kind of tearing apart but that's just I can replace that all right so I'll give you a little overview so we've got the um, screen on top here um, and then we have the power up here so we have the um, 
little mini um, USB 5 volt input here and a 5 volt power adapter input there and we've got a power switch here and then over here we have four buttons on the front here this is the zero button so let's switch it over to capacitance All right, so as you can see there's a little bit of capacitance in the leads there so if we move them closer together the capacitance will increase and if we move them farther apart it will decrease so what we're going to do is zero that so that we don't have any readings there so if we're using longer leads or something we can zero that um, so so we press the zero button it says calculating okay data saved so that's zero now so as you can see it says zero or nearly zero and then the this yellow button here is the switches between inductance and capacitance so it's right now it's on capacitance so now it's on inductance l x stands for inductance i guess and then these other two buttons are the high and low so if we press this one in high c that will switch to high capacitance and then if we press this back in so it's inductance and then push in the blue button we have high inductance and then this little button here the function that seems to only do something when it's in the inductance it tells you the frequency that it's measuring at um, I'm not really sure what that is for it's measuring at 10 Hertz right now um, but yeah and then let's see and then here we have our terminals just two little um, screw terminals there so you can screw anything on there you want I'll probably put slightly longer leads on there they're a little bit too short for me um, but other than that it seems pretty good um, See, so yeah, it's a very basic design, um, not really anything complicated about it, you got to be careful that you don't um, set it on something metal and short it out. Um, I'm probably going to put some kind of a plate on the bottom here to protect it from me doing that, um, but other than that, it's pretty good. So, Alright, so now we'll get to measuring some capacitors. So, I'm going to switch it to the capacitance range, and since I'm going to be measuring a pretty big capacitor here, this is a... 680 microfarad capacitor. I'm going to switch it to the high capacitance range. So it's on the high capacitance range now. So just clip it. Well, you could zero it first, I guess, um, if you want to. So hold that in. Calculating. Sometimes it takes a little bit on the. Okay, there we go. Okay. And then we've got data saved. So now we just clip this on here. And there we have it, 665 microfarads. So, so that's pretty close. All right, so now we're going to test some inductors. So, the way you zero um, the zero it for inductors is you short out the leads, so clip them together, um, and then put it on the inductance setting. Um, probably want it on low for now because the because the Henry is actually quite a bit of inductance. Um, so it says it's zero micro. Henry's, but um, we'll zero it anyway. So data saved. Okay, so we've got zero micro Henry's. So now we're gonna hook up our inductor. This one is says four four hundred and seventy on the bottom. I'm not sure what that means. If that's four hundred and seventy micro Henry's or what, but we've got forty point two six micro Henry's. So I'm not really sure what that means on there. Alright, so now I'm just going to give you a little demonstration of what it, what happens when you um, change the input voltage and how much current it um, draws. So right now it's on standby, it's not connect connected to the um, um, capacitor or anything, and it is drawing about, oh, 20, 25 milliamps about at 5 volts. So here's my, here's my um, power supply, and this is my voltmeter, and it's about 5 volts there. So... And it's happy right now, and so we're going to connect it up to here, and we'll see what the current draw is when I connect it up. Oops. Okay, so right now it's thinking about charging it up. All right, there we go. It just started charging up the capacitor, and this capacitor is really close to its maximum um, capability of testing. So it just sits there for a minute for some reason. I guess it's calculating how much is in the capacitor and then it charges it again, or maybe it's discharging it, and then it, now it's charging again. So it swings from about um, 70 milliamps down to 25 milliamps. So, so 25 is standby, and then it goes up to about 70 at maximum load. So now I'm just going to crank up the um, voltage a little bit 
and you'll see what happens to the screen. Well, first I'll turn the voltage down. Alright, so it just dimmed there to display. You can't really see it as well anymore. And that's about 4.3 volts. So that's its minimum voltage. And then the maximum voltage is... So you can see the display. Now the pixels are all kind of going black. And that is at 5.8 volts. So you want to keep it in the range of 5 volts. Pretty close to 5 volts or else it's not real happy. So just turn it back down to 5 volts. So it's happy at about 5 volts. So... So yeah, um, other than that, um, so I'm probably going to put a um, regulator of some kind on this um, so that I don't have to always run it off of exactly 5 volts. Um, before I was just running it with, the, um, with this little uh, USB, 12 volt USB um, adapter thingy that I kind of took apart, um, but it works pretty good on that, um, but yeah. Okay, so here's a close-up of the main board with the screen taken off. So here's the screen right here. So this is basically a prototyping screen. Um, and I think it even has the, yeah, it has the, um, what the pins are marked there. Um, but yeah, it's just a basic um, board there. But I have, I'm going to add a regulator. So here's my um, backing plate here. It's just aluminum. Um, so, um, of these standoffs here, I'm just going to put a little bit longer standoffs, and it's going to be like that. So my regulator will be right in there, and it'll have a nice heat sink. I think that's way too big of a heat sink for only, for about less than 100 milliamps, but it's there anyway. And that was the only 5 volt regulator I had, so that's going to have to do. So, may as well have somewhere to ma mount it, and it's not going to overheat. Okay, so this is how I'm going to wire up the um, voltage regulator. So right here is my um, input, my DC jack input. And here's my 5 volt regulator, or my 5 volt um, USB input. So this wire comes down here, the positive goes down around this uh, inductor. Move that out of the way. Okay. So it goes down here and through that little hole there. So onto the other side, so let me flip it over. Okay, and it comes out through this hole here and goes to the switch, so the on-off switch right there. And the 5 volt USB also goes, it goes down here. Wait a minute. Okay, so it comes out of this pin right here, goes down here, under the switch, and connects to that same pin right here. So what I figured out is I'm going to cut this wire right here and scratch this a little bit so I can solder a wire to there and solder the input or solder this wire here to the input of my 5 volt red regulator and the output to this pin here the switch pin so what's going to happen is any any input that i put on this um, on the dc jack will be regulated to 5 volts but anything that i plug into here will not be so if i want to plug it into usb then it'll still work because if i because regulators they need to take some of the electricity away or they need to take the voltage down somewhat so if it's if 5 volts is going into a 5 volt regulator then the output is actually not going to be 5 volts it's going to be more like um, I think it takes off like 2 volts or something like that so the a good rule of thumb for regulators um, is to have the input 2 volts greater than what the output is rated to be. So if it's a 5 volt regulator, you probably want to have at least 7 volts going into the input in order for it to work properly. So if I have it set up like that, then I can still run it on the computer or it's through 5 volt USB or I can run it with a higher voltage, so 12 volts or something like that in here and it won't interfere with it. So I think that should work. Um, I don't know. Um, I guess I should probably wire it up and see how it works. Okay, so I've got my 5 volt re voltage regulator all um, wired up. So, <clears throat> I've just, I decided, I found out that I actually didn't need to connect a wire up there. I just need to connect it there and then to the positive and negative. I don't know why I was thinking I needed to scratch that and solder there, but whatever. Um, so I did break the connection right underneath that pink wire there. Um, so... I don't know if you can see that, you probably can't. Um, but so I did break that connection. So it regulates, it takes the whatever voltage is going in 
through this red wire and into the um, voltage regulator and then the ground is the black one and then it spits out the 5 volts on this pink wire which goes back to the um, switch there <clears throat> so I've just got two capacitors there this one is a um, 10 microfarad and this one is a um, 0.1 microfarad capacitor so those are just to filter it and I think you're supposed to put those on there um, so yeah um, other than that I gotta put it together and test it out and we'll see if it works okay so it's all done um, so I've got the plate screwed on there um, I used some little standoffs um, of some kind and so this will actually the plate on here will actually serve a few purposes one to cool the um, the voltage regulator which probably won't really need cooling because it's less than 100 milliamps and um, so should be fine with that um, but it also protect it um, and keep it so that if I set it on a screwdriver or something it doesn't short it out and ruin my um, my meter so so it works um, so here's this plug here is connected to this um, 5.9 volt power supply which is probably about the um, minimum voltage that this is going to take and it works so um, and then I've got this one right here which is connected to 12 volts it's a 12 volt power supply and it works and if we connect up the USB that also works so 5 volt USB works as well as all the other ones so I w I'm imagining that probably well I could try it right now I've got it connected up properly. I'll see what the minimum voltage is that I can have it set at. So, well, I think we've got a short. Okay, alright, so it's working. And right now it's at 5.7 volts, but let's t turn it down a little bit till it. Okay, so it starts working at about. Alright, so right there it's dying down. So about 5.6 volts is the um, minimum you can put into it now. And you could probably put just about any voltage into it now, up to about 30 volts. I think that's when the regulators start to um, not like the voltage anymore. But So yeah, about 5.6 volts is the minimum, somewhere around there. So um, that works good. Um, what else? I guess I could hook it up to this capacitor and you could see it in action. So, let it sit here. Let it do its first reading and then usually the second reading is more accurate. For some reason, probably because when I first connected up, um, it was probably in the middle of a um, charge or discharge or it was trying to... Okay, so that's the right correct reading for this capacitor. So, yeah, you want to wait a few seconds for it to stabilize when you first connect it up to a capacitor because it might give you a false reading the first time. Um, but yeah, it's working, so that's good. And there's the current. The current went up a little tiny bit, but it's pretty much the same even with the voltage regulator. It's about the same as what it was before. I'll turn it on the standby. Yeah, so the standby current is about the same. It's a little bit more, but yeah. So now I can run it off a 9-volt battery or whatever I want to. So yeah, um, I hope that helped you. Um, so if you need a capacitance or inductance meter, I would highly recommend this one. Um, it works really well. Um, so yeah, um, thanks for watching.